My name is Cindy. I am the um, domestic violence advocate for the Beverly Police Department. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the silent witness project that's um, over to the side. There's uh, 13 silhouettes, um, 13 deaths in Massachusetts from January to, to September. There's one extra for um, the unknowns that we don't know about. So these are, these are folks who have passed in Massachusetts this year due to domestic violence. Um, and, and they're very powerful stories. They have a narrative on who they are, what happened. Um, so if you have a minute and you haven't read them, it's, it's a very powerful um, project. And I wanted to take a few minutes to um, just to give them a moment of silence, um, if we can. Thank you all. Um, so I have uh, this. This year was a, a year that they, the the domestic violence awareness month theme was um, everybody knows someone, and you know I I was kind of looking out. Um, at everyone and I'm like wow everybody does know someone right because it's one in four women would be uh, will be physically assaulted um, and one in seven men and if you look around like that's one in four women that's you know people in this audience um, who have been physically assaulted by a partner or a caregiver or um, you know someone in their family and that's powerful, you know, like you think about it and, and you're like, you don't really, a lot of people don't think about domestic violence and some may think, oh, I don't know anybody, but in reality, you probably do know someone. You probably do know someone who's struggling, who's going, um, who's in a relationship that's, that's abusive, who, who, you know, is, is being cared for by someone who's abusive. And it's really important to like look for signs and know. And if you and if you feel in your gut there's something wrong, reach out to them. Tell them that you're there for them. Give them information. Um, and I think that's so important. And I was like just kind of looking at everybody, and I'm like, wow, you know, that's really powerful. Just one in four have been physically assaulted. Women here, one in seven have been physically assaulted. Um, I have um, a survivor speaker who's going to be speaking today, an amazing person, um, Addie, and I wanted to, to introduce her and have her come up and say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'd like to first begin by thanking Mayor Cahill for prioritizing this event and for acknowledging how frustratingly prevalent domestic violence is in our society at large and also within our community here in Beverly. Breaking silence and naming the problem is the first piece in destigmatizing the experience of living through abuse. Only with community behind us can we change the culture that allows for such abuse to occur. My story did not begin in Beverly, um, but it followed me here. And when I found myself in the parking lot of the police department, I felt as though I was reliving a nightmare that I had tried so hard to leave behind. But when I walked through the door, I wasn't alone. I had a hawk advocate with me who knew how to facilitate a conversation between myself and the police. When I sat with my first interview with Officer Cargyle, he was patient, professional, and thoughtful. He didn't rush me, and most importantly, he made me feel like he believed me. To survive in abusive relationships, we hide a lot from the outside world, but mostly we hide truth from ourselves. One of the most powerful moments I've had through this whole process was receiving a phone call from Officer Cargyle in which he told me that he had done the police work that would empower me to make myself safe 
help was transformative, not only because I was able to move forward in the legal process, but because it gave me the emotional validation that I needed to find courage to pursue the process. And every time my anxiety and fear balloon up, or the bewilderment and exhaustion of needing to go through the legal process threatened to overwhelm me, up steps Cindy Baez. Her work as DV and legal advocate for the police department is invaluable. And if I could make this event a celebration of her, I would. The truth is that we need a battalion of Cindy's in police departments across the Commonwealth and beyond. Not just for the work she does for us survivors, but for the symbol that she represents in, as our social commitment to changing the culture of violence that exists in its many forms around us. Um, to close my works today, I wanted to touch on a theme um, from a Domestic Violence Awareness Month that really touched me. It was living into values and cultivating joy. As a person who grows things for a living, I'm a farmer. Um, Cultivating joy has been my focus since arriving here in New England, and it's the work that I return to after each court date and after each hard day. This time of year, we are reminded of the work that is done underground in the long months of rest here in New England, the work of the decomposers cleaning debris but enriching the soil at the same time, creating fertile ground for the seeds of spring. I encourage all of you to reflect on that lesson from nature that to cultivate our joy, we must first break down the debris and weave a mycelial-like network of support around each other that, that leaves no room for abuse or violence of any kind. Thank you. Thank you, Addie. I appreciate it. Um, the next person that I'm going to be calling up is Sarah, the executive director at Hawk. I can't talk about how important Hawk, the, um, the agency Hawk Healing Abuse Working for Change is. We utilize their services so much um, and I am very appreciative for having a, an agency like Hawk where um, my clients can go and get services that I, I cannot provide. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful and here's Sarah. Thank you so much, Cindy. And how about another um, big thank you for Cindy. Um, really bring us all together here. Um, I know it, this all, it doesn't all just happen, so thank you for your work. Addie, my heartfelt thank you for sharing your experience. Um, and it's so beautifully said. As Cindy said, the prevalence of domestic violence can be overwhelming. We know the statistics. Um, but sadly, the prevalence of intimate partner violence, like the prevalence of gun violence, tends to dull our senses instead of enhance them. We find ourselves in a battle for the values of our community every single day. We need to decide, do we accept intimate partner violence as part of our community? Or do we strive and work every day for safety, equity, and empowerment? These are the anecdotes and the opposite of violence. I'm proud to say that Beverly has taken an important stand in this regard by committing to funding a domestic violence legal advocate as part of their police department. This important, important investment ensures that those impacted by intimate partner violence, like Addie, have support as they navigate the criminal justice system. Likewise, gatherings like today, with the strong support of our police force, our mayor, our city officials, our service providers, and residents articulate our values for the greater community. In the coming year, I hope that we can build a better continuum of care with our local hospitals and medical providers. We need to engage our business owners as employers who have the, the power to set the tone of how we respond when someone's experiencing domestic abuse and as important stakeholders in our communities. On the statewide stage, 
we need to support the Healthy Youth Act to ensure accurate sex and reproductive health education is present in our schools and bills like the Common Start Bill that will improve access to affordable, high quality child care. These are the practical building blocks of empowerment and prevention of intimate partner violence. This year, Hawk has supported 135 Beverly residents with shelter, legal services, financial assistance, advocacy, and support groups. The crisis intervention, stabilization, and healing fostered by Hawk services have a direct impact on the 138 children that were also part of these families. Remember that we're here as a resource for you, whatever your role might be. We're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week via our emergency hotline. You can follow Hawk on social media for more information on how you can be an active participant in establishing and living our values as a community every day. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate it. Um, the next person that we're we're gonna I'm gonna have up um, to speak uh, is from Senior Care. And this year, I decided to ask um, Senior Care Protective Services to come and speak because I've been working um, a lot with them this year. Um, so, Renee from Senior Care. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I just want to echo what everyone else has said about Cindy. We certainly do rely on Cindy quite a bit and have been referring to her, which is good and bad, as you can imagine, right? We certainly need her services and we thank her for her services. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Renee Carr. I'm the director of the Protective Services Program at Senior Care. And what we do is we receive and respond to reports of elder abuse um, in, this, in this area, Beverly being one of our communities. Of course, as you can imagine, some of those physical abuse reports are characterized by domestic violence. And I want to take a moment to highlight that um, it's, it's often thought about intimate partner violence, but it, in, in all seriousness and all statistically speaking, that is not the majority of our cases. In most domestic violence cases, what we see is family relations, sons, daughters, grandchildren, and often these, these perpetrators are caregivers that these elders rely on for day-to-day -day needs to be met, essential needs to be met. Um, so we certainly see that and we, we certainly reach out to our community resources as needed. Recently, I read a report of adult um, maltreatment. It was put out by the Administration of Community Living and the Administration on Aging. And of all the maltreatment incident reports that came out, over 80% were characterized by elder maltreatment. So that's a startling statistic um, when you think about that. Um, as we all know, domestic violence victims have insurmountable at times um, challenges and obstacles and I just want to highlight that elders are no different in fact they have probably some more unique and in more difficult um, challenges to overcome to meet their safety needs in the community can you imagine not being able to physically get to a resource or use technology to do some research to find out who to contact. Maybe you're reliant on your abuser for transportation, so therefore getting to where you need to get is even more difficult without letting someone know you're reaching out for help. So I really just want to take a moment and let people think about that and, and understand that all domestic violent victims need our attention and our support and our assistance. Elders have a unique set of circumstances when you, when you think about them as victims. Um, lastly, I, I really want to just thank everyone for coming here, coming together and acknowledging that we have a problem and we are committed to addressing that problem and, and in a perfect world we're going to put an end to domestic violence. It certainly does take a village. To, to tackle these problems. Um, I certainly know Senior Care has some great community partners and we could not do this work without our community partners like Cindy, like Sarah, like Darlene Prinz. Um, we reach out to the police department quite a bit and, and Darlene is our liaison. Um, I think it's a nice segue really to introduce uh, Scott Trenty who is our CEO at Senior Care 
and um, he has a special presentation that he would like to do today. Hi folks, again I'm Scott Trenty from the Director of Senior Care and each year, each September we have a annual meeting and as part of the annual meeting um, we accept nominations in the months prior uh, for Board of Directors awards and this year Darlene was unanimously voted by our Board of Directors to receive a Community Impact Award um, noting her long career in law enforcement, um, her work with elders, educating elders regarding scams, certainly helping out Renee and, and her protective services team, and we're very honored to um, be able to honor you. And you know, we have a celebration each year. This year it was at the Beauport Hotel um, a few weeks ago, and but Darlene was in a much better place. It's like Beauport Hotel or Aruba. <laughs> Easy choice, right? In any event, congratulations. And in addition to uh, making a charitable donation to St. Jude's Research Foundation or hospital, which you wanted, we also have a gift bag for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Darlene is amazing. She, she helps um, all the time with domestic violence uh, survivors um, and sexual assault survivors. So thank you, Darlene. Um, next, I am going to invite Chief LaLasher. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, thank you everyone for coming and congratulations to Detective Prince again. I gave her a hard time early and said she was going to have to do a speech and she went into a mild panic, so I didn't do that. Um, Again, we want to thank, thank Cindy for all the hard work she does, uh, our partnership with Hawk, the District Attorney's Office, our allied agencies. It's all about the survivors, making sure they get the treatment and care they need, and also so they know if they want to prosecute that they get justice. That survivors uh, deserve the justice they seek. So I want to, I want to thank all those agencies. Um, I certainly want to thank the men and women of the Police Department for all the hard work they do on a daily basis. And we talk about it internally, but you know, as a, as a note to this, in the last about 12 hours, three police officers have been killed going to domestic violence calls. Two in Connecticut, one in Las Vegas, and there are two fighting for their lives responding to domestic violence calls. So it shows you what you know, the officers have to deal with. It's one of the most dangerous calls we go on. Um, people can turn on us, even the people who call us for help sometimes turn on us. But we're there for the survivors, we're there for whoever needs our help, and we'll continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. And Mayor Cahill. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Um, thank you for all your great work. Addy, thank you for sharing with us today um, and for your courage. Um, Detective Prince, thank you, Con congratulations, and more mostly thank you for your professionalism and all the great work you do. It's appreciated very much. Um, so we here, um, I'm, you know, we're surrounded with people who work day in and day out to protect, to prevent, and protect, and help people move forward uh, from domestic violence. So I want to thank you for all you do every day of the year. Um, and I want to just acknowledge, we, we've heard from Hawk. Uh, we've got representation of our own local Human Rights Committee. Mindy, great to see you. And, um, and the work, the great work the Human Rights Committee does. Um, our police department, thank you for everything. We have folks here from our Council on Aging. Thank you for all the work you're doing as well. Uh, the North Shore Rape Crisis Center. And I don't want, and Senior Care, I'm sorry. Senior Care, uh, all who are involved in working to serve people who too many times, um, <clears throat> excuse me, have this, have this violence perpetrated on them. And I want to thank all of our team at City Hall, a bunch of our team are, are out here today uh, to support this conversation uh, and, th and this 
memorializing of, of the need to keep doing this work. Um, Councilor Rand, our Estelle Rand, our Ward 2 City Councilor, Council Todd Rotundo, Ward 1, and our City Council President Julie Flowers, thank you all for being able to make time out of your days to be here. Uh, it's hard for City Councilors and School Committee members because they all have day jobs. So in terms of getting away from that to be here, so thank you for being able to. <coughs> Um, there's, there's, <laughs> there are many important things that go on. This work is right at the top of what's most important. And I also want to thank BevCam and especially right now thank BevCam because as I said, so many of you do this work day in and day out. You know it. You know the importance. You know the critical nature of it. The fact that BevCam is here so we can rebroadcast this and get the word out again. This, uh, uh, you know, these reminders to all of our residents to be attentive to recognize and, and be reminded that domestic violence happens in our community and you know the, the words may seem simple but if, if you see anything that concerns you please speak up please reach out to our law enforcement please reach out to somebody you trust to help try to um, you know if somebody might be in danger we want to make sure that we step up and act so um, thank you BevCam and let's hope that uh, that this is a helpful reminder to everybody who sees this with that said I'm just going to read this. Um, it's our domestic violence proclamation as a city. <coughs> Excuse me. Whereas domestic violence is a serious crime that affects people of all races, ages, gender, and income levels. I'm searching for my glasses. Hang on just a sec. And whereas the impact of domestic violence is wide ranging, directly affecting individuals and society as a whole here in this community, throughout the United States and the world. And whereas children that grow up in violent homes are believed to be abused and neglected at a rate higher than the national average, and whereas domestic violence costs the nation billions of dollars annually in medical expenses, police and court costs, shelters, foster care, sick leave, absenteeism and non-productivity, and whereas only a coordinated community effort will put a stop to this heinous crime, Whereas Domestic Violence Awareness Month provides an excellent opportunity for citizens to learn more about preventing domestic violence and to show support for the numerous organizations and individuals who provide critical advocacy, services and assistance to victims. Now therefore I, Michael P. Cahill, do hereby proclaim the month of October in Beverly as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and I urge our residents to work toward improving victim safety and holding offenders accountable for their actions against individual victims in our society as a whole. I declare the City of Beverly a domestic violence free zone and encourage residents to work together to eliminate domestic violence from our community. I always stumble over those last words, a domestic violence free zone. That's the work we have to do every day. Nothing guarantees it. It's the work of so many of you here and it's anything we as friends and neighbors and family members and, and just anybody who sees th something to be concerned with and the responsibilities that we have to try to help to step in and step up. Um, and the last thing I do want to say going back to Chief sharing that really sad news that I wasn't aware the nature of, of what happened in, in Bristol this morning, knew that it had happened, the fact that these, these, this and what happened in, where'd you say, Las Vegas? Both were the result of domestic violence calls. Um, it just ha it underscores all that our uh, police officers, um, that you put yourselves out there each day to protect all of us. So I want to make sure that we are, are understanding of that. Um, to everybody involved here today, thank you for all you do. It matters, it matters every day of the year. Thanks. Cindy? Thank you, Mayor Cahill. So last but not least, I am going to have um, Valerie come up and say a prayer um, to end our um, proclamation. And I want to thank you all so much for coming out. Um, you, Rape Crisis Center, North Shore Music Theater, Senior Care, um, the, the counselors, police department, uh, you know, uh, city officials, city employees, um, Hawk, thank you all for coming out. I really appreciate it.
I'm Valerie Christman. I'm the pastor at Pilgrim Church down the street and just also want to thank Cindy for her hard work and Hawk. You know, often uh, domestic violence victims come to their house of worship to share uh, what's going on in their lives and I'm grateful to have those community partners to, um, to reach out to when that happens. So please, uh, I invite you to join me in prayer. God, we come together today lamenting the fact that we're gathering again to make people aware of domestic violence. We long for it to not even be a reality. We long for communities full of relationships marked by mutuality, love, and respect, not control, anger, and shame. We grieve the many victims of domestic violence here on the North Shore, as we've seen through the Silent Witness Project. God, we pray that you would comfort those who grieve and are in pain. We pray that you would make a way where it seems there is no way, restoring what is broken in people's lives. Help victims to know that you see them and know their pain, that you are a God who has faced sorrow and is well acquainted with grief. Give them hope to keep going. For children who are witnessing or experience violence in their home, hold them close, Heavenly Father. Protect them and heal their memories of abuse. For abusers, let them know that help is available. Convict them of their wrong actions and turn their hearts toward you. For witnesses, give them courage to speak up and support victims. God, give wisdom to the community of Beverly and its leaders and other communities of the North Shore that we will find ways to teach our sons and daughters that love and mutuality rather than power and control are the standards for a healthy relationship. Continue to mobilize our community agencies, faith-based institutions, public servants, and many others to work together and persist so that violence and victimization do not have the last word. We thank you that you are a God who promises to execute justice for the oppressed and shows us the way to lead lives of love. Thank you for the gift of the family and community that draws together and at their best give us a place to express our deep love for one another. Help us, Lord, for without you we can do nothing. We pray in your name. Amen.